Wetlands are the kidneys of the landscape, filtering and cleaning water for all our benefit. With great losses of wetlands to human development, we are losing this service. Restoration of traditional wetlands can be very expensive. Floating wetlands offer a cost-effective and scalable solution for regaining wetland function in the landscape. And they can fit into places where traditional wetland restoration isn't an option. The purpose of floating wetlands primarily are two reasons. One is to improve water quality and the other is to improve habitat. One of the most important goals for me was to design things that are low cost and with readily available materials, including ABS pipe, bamboo poles, orange snow fence, coconut coir, wood members, meshes, two liter plastic bottles. One of the most important things also to think about is the plant materials, and they have a lot of influence on the different types of designs, whether it's woody species or herbaceous species, what types of plants are gonna perform different functions, which uh, are part of the design goals for the project. This is one raft which you can see has a submerged edge that gives the opportunity for emergent plants to grow. You can see that it's weighted down with cinder blocks to keep that edge low. And so therefore, allowing the water to come in gives a shallow zone, which is good for refuge for juvenile fish. And generally speaking, that emergent zone is really important for near shore food web. Initially, there was coffee bags put in and those coffee bags held composted sticks. So the sticks have already been composted and went through this is what didn't make it through the screen in a composting facility. But most, a lot of that has now disappeared. Looks like there's some worms in there, which is kind of neat. Okay. With these dome rafts, it's uh, been a test to see whether the stakes, so-called live stakes, which are willow cuttings, will survive and will they thrive in a completely hydroponic environment without any soil. And there's been several species that have been tested, but you can see that it was originally cut right here, and then all these roots grew after it was put in the water. So here's another canopy raft with Sitka willow, and this one is quite a bit larger. It uh, started also with arched saplings and then it's been eaten down by beaver but originally it was about seven feet tall at the crest of the arch. The main purpose of this raft is to shade the water to help keep the water cool as well as to provide insect drop from overhang canopies. With these rafts going in We've certainly seen habitat benefits. We've seen these rafts being used by rainbow trout, both for cover and also for foraging. Many of the flowering plants here are being pollinated by insects as they forage. In addition, all of the seed production, the seed heads, particularly the grasses, sedges, and rushes, are important food for a number of wildlife species. For last year's installation, we planted about a dozen species of plants, testing to see what would grow well. Of these, the most successful have been Carex tapata, known as stock grain sedge, Juncus encephalius, known as dagger leaf rush, and Scirpus microcarpus, known as panicled bulrush. In addition, about two dozen species showed up on their own. The most prolific have been Epilobium palustra, known as marsh willow herb, and Asturtium officinale, known as watercress. These preliminary trials will help inform plant selection for future floating wetlands projects in the Pacific Northwest.
When I first saw this place, the first thing that came to mind was just a tremendous amount of excitement for the opportunity to investigate and develop and test this new technology. It's amazing to see how quickly everything has grown and it's a great chance to be connected to the vitality of this place.